Make sure we're live. And there we go. Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream. Today is December 10th, 2019. And we're doing a live stream uh, on math. Okay, I'm just gonna pop out the chat here. That way that's sitting out. So our stream for today is uh, drop in math tutoring session for 2019, number nine. So this is the ninth one. The odds are I probably lost count, but uh, let's assume this is the ninth one that we're doing for this school year. And we did a whole bunch for last school year since we started doing uh, live streaming really after a few months, after we got the ball rolling, we started doing uh, math live streams. Uh, so we're going to continue doing these. I'm just making myself available for a couple hours, uh, usually per week. Uh, maybe right now it's once every 10 days or so. Uh, two to four times a month, making myself available for you guys. Uh, if you need any help for high school mathematics, if I can help you out, uh, I will. And there's a certain number of people that pop in usually, uh, most often during these math streams where uh, when people ask questions they do provide answers uh, some of the people know math their mathematics is more powerful than mine so they have uh, better answers at times uh, for the more complicated stuff always tilted how are you doing hey man how is, how are you doing good brother doing good always happy to do a little mathematics right always happy to do a little mathematics and it's a nice uh, fall uh, day right now we're sort of middle of the day we're starting at 12 p.m by the way i should be trying to kick these in into later in the evening for people in canada united states to have access to this but uh, i'm busy with the students at those times uh, usually so i try to maybe sometimes do these on the weekends hannah how are you doing hey chicho can you show me how to uh, factor in quadratics yeah for sure Hannah we do top fiver how's life how's life Dante what's up brother how's it going we're gonna get straight right into mathematics nice Saint just Germany how are you welcome welcome hope everybody's doing well uh, longest night of the year coming up December 21st 11 more days we get the longest night of the year cool eh? very nice very nice ah good another mod here I'm gonna learn okay sweet Dante yeah and by the way Dante if anytime you're overwhelmed uh, just give me a heads up say hey Chicho I just want to chill today I'll take over right I'll make sure I'm at the bottom of the chat and if I see anything going on we just kill it right uh, <laughs> it works as well i'm slowly after a year and a bit getting a hang hang of the twitch rhythm and the flow right so and i love it and it's fantastic right uh, see just germany i'm good uh let's talk about factoring max gator welcome why don't you shave your uh your beard i do at times sure and this is a goatee it's not a full beard i I have had full beards many, many times. There's two full beard videos of me trimming down, right? One of them full on gone, and another one converted into this, right? Lonely Piggy, how are you doing? How did the exam go? Hello, hello, I've got amazing news. Passed my RCMP entrance exam yesterday. Didn't do as well I, as I liked, but the fact remains awesome. Congrats, congrats, brother. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So you go into basic training now, I guess, right? They changed my seat at my office and now uh, I have a window seat. Yeah, upgrade, upgrade. <laughs> congrats, top fiver says, congrats. Yeah, very nice, very nice. That's a serious step, right? That's a serious hurdle, obstacle gone, right? That's a few more steps. There's a few more steps, interviews uh, and whatnot. Oh, okay the interviews that's right I thought maybe they would conduct the interview well I guess it's easier for them less labor intensive for them to use sort of a automated fill uh, automated exam 
to a certain degree as the first initial filter, right? So usually for large corporations or whatnot, or our system, if you're trying to get from A to B, there's filters set in place, right? Obstacles. They're not necessarily valid, but because this whole thing is automated, right? Uh, they put obstacles in place. One of the first ones, of course, is a high school degree, right? If you don't have your high school degree, that first filter, you get knocked off, right? Say so playing a video game and you lose on the first level. Damn, that sucks, right? Can you give me a shout out? Say my name. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to read the whole thing because I don't know what it says. But neat. How you doing? Welcome to our stream, right? <laughs> White says don't. <laughs> uh, you came to the wrong stream to do trolling on that level because I'm horrendous at reading names. I'm horrendous at pronouncing names, right? Uh, so I shortened everything. Uh, and we're at the end of it. Uh, you try and... <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like... Boy, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is, brother. Right? Even I'm, I can do that. <laughs> These trolls are so weak. I mean, they don't even hang around to get a vibe of the thing to see what's going on. They're just like, I, I knew someone, and a conversation came up once regarding intimacy and stuff like this, and we were talking about someone else, and uh, that person said he was like a rooster, in and out. Which, <laughs> these are these are rooster trolls, right? Oh, missed. Oops. Right. That's funny. Should we do factoring, Hannah? What's factoring? Why are we factoring quadratics or any any type of function really? What well, quadratics is sort of the first wave, right? For how long will you stay? In, uh, will you stay living old? how long man i don't know i'm shooting for 52 right i'm shooting for 52 trolls throughout the day <laughs> they're like if they're if they're, if they're calling me old skeleton <laughs> they must be like two years old like they're just new to the world right oh by the way if they're if they're here i don't know if they're here or not we have a video out regarding perspective on life on mathematics so I would recommend all these weak trolls, Chicho time. Let me find you a math video we created, which will explain to you why you, if you're a weak troll, why you might be a weak troll, troll, right? Why there might be better opportunities for you out there. Uh, take a look at this video. It's called uh, why the perception of time varies with age Okay Vanessa hey Chicho my daughter got her midterm. Oh, yeah, I gotta allow this Oop. Oop. Hi Vanessa, how are you doing? Uh, be nice boys and girls be nice TBF you've got an epic gray beard. Thank you uh, How did your dog die? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, neat. There's a oh, neat. You're out, man. I'm gonna ban you. You're out. Chicho banning is is like is like man. You you boo booed, <laughs> right? You boo booed. Uh, hey, Chicho, my daughter. Hi, Vanessa. How are you doing? My daughter got her midterm report back last week, and she dropped from an A to a B. Okay. She's in second grade. Oh, second grade. Hey, they're grading A, B for second grade. Uh, the note from her teacher said, uh, compounded addition problems. Compound addition problems. I don't know what compound addition means. Any advice on how to help her grasp it a little bit better? Yeah, for sure, uh, Vanessa. Da, da, da. Uh, she's really smart, but just has a short attention span when it comes to math uh, first order of business if someone has a short attention span when it comes to math feed them the information faster my from my experience if someone's losing attention and they got a short attention span for math 
I feed it feed the information to them faster don't worry too much about the minor nuances right kick them up to a level where they start showing interest right and once you got those problems going on okay you obviously need the pre stuff to be able to do this stuff right so get them going on these more complicated problems stuff that they might be interested in and when they hit an obstacle that they don't know how to do you kick them back to that specific nuance that they had to learn teach them that and right away they get to practice it because it's a hurdle that just they just overcame right and they do it and they actually see how that uh, connects back to everything else before that and they also get to use it to connect onto more complicated concepts so that's one way of doing it right so keep an eye out for that that's really important don't hold uh, students that are losing attention span in, in math or anything else for that matter in one spot just because they're having a hard, hard time grasping that one concept or they're getting bored of that one concept even if they can't do it properly yet all the time right as long as they know how to do it two out of four times just kick them up right if they're stuck on that preferably you need to get them doing a little bit better than two out of four 50 percent of the time getting it correct but if they continue to use it they'll improve on it right the other one is this uh, take a look at the these videos we put out uh, let me go to our playlist uh, if you go to the YouTube channel I put out three videos for early uh, early childhood education and uh, let me find it for you here we go uh, there's four videos I put out okay uh, how to teach counting okay start off with this one and then uh, I put this out a month ago okay start off with this one and then follow the rest of these videos I might have put this in a playlist actually so let me see if I put it in a playlist uh, I didn't create an early childhood education playlist yet I don't think so okay but here's the video first video Vanessa take a look at this and there is uh, there is so this one is how to teach counting and then the next one is how to teach adding the next one is how to teach multiplication and the one out of that is uh, is the whole thing oh yeah let me give you the whole thing so it's three videos and it's three videos broken into pieces from this one longer video so this is the video you want to you want to see uh, it'll give you my train of thought on how to deal with kids I usually work with grade you know six and up five six five is lowest I go but if depending on where you are in the world they start teaching mathematics like really early on like grade one or two you're already into adding multiplying and dividing right so if that's the case these should help you out okay hope hope that's okay that's sort of my long winded uh, to get you going on it if you have any more questions Vanessa uh, just drop me a line and uh, or pop into the stream either today if you get a chance to watch I don't think you get a chance to watch them but in the next math stream and let me know where your daughter might be having problems and we'll try to deal with it right away right can we time out the guy yeah I, I banned them void sorry I'm a little Chicho ban bog <laughs> have you heard about the equation which some people consider the most mathematically beautiful equation uh, because it puts three uh, arithmetic operations and five fundamental yeah it's the jeez I don't even know it's it, it takes e one zero I and puts them all into one I can't remember what it is hey Chicho hello Contra how are you doing mask of Raven thank you very much for the twitch uh, uh, tier one sub five emotes shared shared reward of five others in chat nice hey we got a new emote what is that guy haha -ha ball <laughs> nice <laughs> awesome thank you very much my pleasure Vanessa maybe I'm over explaining it I'll go check out the links she was kind of heartbroken she's used to straight A's uh, yeah that's a mask of raven that equation is beautiful it really is beautiful 
uh, and Vanessa uh, I don't know what type of school your daughter is in but if she's getting heartbroken in grade two keep a close eye out on it okay um, I've seen a lot of parents come up to me I've had a lot of parents come up to me in either grade eight high school when their kids are entering high school or towards the end of elementary school and they say I don't know what happened uh, my son my daughter was doing fantastic in math they loved math now they hate it right and then it's extra work from my part anyway to try to get these kids to love math again right because the system really grinds them down what do you like more algebra or analysis Oof. Uh, I like data I like data I like algebra just for the sake of meditative right so they're two different beasts algebra is a syntax of the language right that's that's one reason from day one when I started creating math videos right I created something whole math series the videos we we're producing which is called the language of mathematics which is more concerned with the syntax of the language the rules of mathematics algebra right and my website that I put together I actually have both websites right uh, language of mathematics.com and math in real life.com if you punch those in they take you to Chicho or math in real life right and I created another series called math in real life is because that's really the analysis of it so both right common core math is in the united states literally ruined math for a whole generation and beyond because what they did right contra by the way hannah i hope you're okay with whole factoring i'm not dealing with it yet i just want to take care of all the right that's tolerable yeah mask of room is horrendous but uh contra they didn't just ruin math for a whole generation because what they did they made more than one generation really two three generations illiterate in the language of mathematics so as soon as you do that that generation for the most part not all of them but on average illiterate in the language of mathematics and in canada as well right illiterate in the language of mathematics and those generations grow up and have children of their own now they don't know math right so when their kids come home from school with math questions that generation doesn't know mathematics so it's a perpetual thing it's a very you know we're not supposed to talk about politics on these math streams but it's very uh typical colonial imperialist type of maneuver right because when they take over imperial nations when they take over a land somewhere the first thing you do you take out a certain tradition for two to three generations and then future generations are also lost we we can see that happening with the indigenous population in canada and the united states right destroyed for a number of generations and left to rot right now they had to build themselves back up and they're doing a fantastic job doing it but it takes a tremendous amount of effort to do it right so common core math was exactly the strategy used by imperial nations to take over lands right i know it's politics i apologize but it is about education right uh i'd say it's more of how the uh education system works a lot of math teachers here in texas are just football coaches who didn't get a degree in mathematics i sucked at math during high school because of this yeah um snack that's miles back snack snack that smiles back <laughs> cool. snack to smiles back uh it's not just texas it's canada as well the i used to know some good math teachers 20 years ago they're gone right very few remain that i interact with anyway and the ones i've interacted with they're horrendous okay um so in canada as well it's not just texas uh, i don't know if it's complete western world but canada and united states that's exactly that's what happened they monkey see the monkey do right in quebec they 
implemented the reform in the teaching sector they changed everything about uh, anything that's that is was teached it's so uh, now uh, was hard doing the transition because I was in the middle of high school when it happened it made people who had 30 percent get 75 percent <laughs> brutal for example teaching long division throws tons of kids off even though I as a math major and math enthusiast literally never use it ever at all why are we teaching it uh, mask of ribbon I disagree with you there I like teaching it I know how to do it well maybe one reason I know how to do it is because I teach mathematics but it is important because it's the reverse process of multiplication right so it's good to complete a loop in my opinion that's useless and annoying and makes people think math is just computation and being a human algorithm um, the way they teach it I agree with you because they give them crazy numbers to divide right forget about that give people numbers that you can get into the decimals and stuff like this and leave it at that they just have to know that it's the reverse of multiplication which is really multiplication of division right which is really just a connection to addition right so all three things are important to teach um, yeah but that's just a part of the system Chicho was talking about major underfunding of public education common core is just a symptom yeah what common core is actually good though uh, not that I've seen uh, it might be now but when I went to middle school eight years ago it felt it, it I felt it was not a good system I've had uh, encounters with kids who have gone through common core and uh, brutal brutal I've never seen a good argument against it uh, it was a money pit uh, I looked at the how much money was wasted for this whole process it's centralization of education education and that's a whole branch whole discussion on its own the textbooks that they sell are just pure garbage that they put together is basically more uh, monopolies given to certain institution to create textbooks to provide to common core which is just garbage right but if you've never heard a ar good argument against it you've never talked to anyone that understood it okay big uh, or big brain most kids have trouble with math instruction is hard uh, not necessarily we when you say most kids have trouble with math which kids are we talking about are we talking about the kids in Canada and United States or are we talking about kids in Russia South Korea Africa France UK South America Bolivia Brazil Venezuela kids where the one thing you have to appreciate is when people say oh kids are having a hard time with math if you look at the statistics oh it's kids in Canada and United States are having a hard time with math the ones I've looked at but when I interact with kids from different parts of the world they don't have a problem with math they love math they're pretty good at math right so it's not the kids it's the system that's end of story <laughs> right in Quebec everyone does okay in math it's French grammar that's hard yeah and uh, I've had a fair bit of uh, students from uh, a French immersion that I've taught mathematics to some of them have a hard time with mathematics because they were they were English raised their first language was English they were trying to learn French and they were teaching mathematics in French so they were tr data in between language connecting mathematics which is a language on its own to English so they lost some of the stuff in translation by the way I got snacks Apple if you're doing math have a little bit of snacks with you okay let's do factor Hannah I hope you're still around uh, French is I think one of the three hardest languages to write it's difficult they try to teach it to me I took it all the way up to grade 11 and I cheated all the way through high school uh, <laughs> Fenetra. 
<laughs> that's supposed to mean I can't even pronounce it window right let's do factoring of quadratic functions look at that. so let me give you a little intro and by the way if there's math questions let us know we'll make a little list here that we're gonna go over but right now we're gonna talk about factoring fenetra <laughs> we're gonna talk about factoring quadratics factoring quadratics let me give you a little intro factoring quadratics this thing right here right and quadratics are parabolas when they say quadratics in general this is what we're talking about right something that does this right so if you throw a pen it'll do this right so this stuff comes in handy in economics comes in handy in kinematics comes in handy multiple different places right i always say that japanese is in many many ways easier to learn than french i've never tried okay so factoring the reason if you're looking at have been popping onto the math streams or if you talk to people who are trying to learn mathematics and whatnot usually one of the places that people have a hard time with there's a few different places that takes people out of the game right one of the places that takes people out of the game is factoring quadratics because this is really the first time you're introduced to the concept of factoring factoring so it's not factoring quadratics that takes people out of the game it's factoring that takes people out of the game the reason that most people are taken out of the game when they encounter encounter factoring quadratics is because they don't understand what factoring really is because it's never really explained properly right or let me paraphrase that right or say it in a way that's not condescending <laughs> i found with students that i work with once they understand what factoring is then they don't have a hard time factoring quadratics because quadratics are just parabolas right so what is factoring factoring is us looking at a system and breaking it down to its core properties right factoring can be thought of as the same process as factoring an integer okay or a natural number right and if someone's doing factoring quadratics they've already encountered prime numbers factoring natural numbers right so consider this consider the number 28 okay 28 now one of the things that happens is when you're coming into high school or whatnot or you're looking at the real number set what you find out is this is called a composite number it's not a prime number and prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided evenly by one in themselves right so 28 is made up of other numbers okay so what you can do is break down 28 so take 28 and break it down into things that multiply together to give you 28 if the number is even you can always divide it by 2 so you're going to take 28 divide it by 2 2 times 14 gives you 28 right and this is multiplication between these but we never put it in because we know it's multiplication we're talking about multiplication now 2 is a prime number it can only be broken down into 1 and itself multiplied together to give us 2 so anything that fits that pattern that can only be broken down into one times itself to give itself then we don't break it down but 14 is 2 times 7 right so we break this down 2 times 7 cool right so what we find out is 28 28 is really 2 times 2 times 7 cool useful damn right it's useful it's very very useful it's on the same concept of us taking something in the natural world right and breaking it down to find out what its building blocks are right for example take water okay water 
never got that. <laughs> so take water, mask of a raven. Let's check it out. When I first explained to one of my friends the actual purpose of going from, for example, that to that, rather than just the trick, he'd learn. He found it very illuminating, very illuminating indeed, indeed, right? So on the same concept of this number, right? Take water. What's water? Water is H2O, right? H2O, right? Now, back in the day, us human beings, before we understood what molecules, atoms, during the time where we thought everything in the world was made up of five elements, earth, wind, fire, water, and wood or soil. I don't know what it was, right? But one of them has always been water. During that period, we looked at water and went, that's water. We thought water was just water. Nothing made up water. Water was the thing, right? And then as we evolved, as we understood more about the world, we realized that water is really pure water is really h2o cool what is h2o break down h2o h2o says there is h2 two hydrogens and an oxygen cool right and two hydro hydrogens means hydrogen and a hydrogen cool what's water is two hydrogens and an oxygen cool why is this important well what else can you make with this building block, right? Because if your building block, your core building block is H2O, you have to make, whatever you make has to have H2O in it. But if you're able to break this down into prime factors, right? Prime elements, then you can take parts of these and create something else, right? You could take a two from 28 and a seven from 28 2 times 7 is 14 and multiply it by 5. What do you come up with? Cool. 0, 2, you come up with 70. Oh, that means if we break down 70, it's 7 times 10. 10 is 2 times 5. So it's 2 times 7 times 5. 2 times 7 times. Cool. We just came up with a new number, right? Guess what? We do the same thing with these things, right? Guess what? we do the same thing with functions right so on the same concept we can take any function and try to break it down into core building blocks right let's start off with one of the easy functions let's start off with the quadratic so it's breaking down the thing called factoring that's exactly what it's called void right breaking down the thing is called factoring it's called breaking it down to see what its core building blocks are right that's it and a quadratic is just a function that's a parabola that does this guess what we have an infinite number infinite types of functions here's a quadratic a cubic does this Power four does this. Power five can do that. You can have a line. This guy is really one of the core functions we have, right? You could have a function that does this, right? There are an infinite number types of functions we have. And what we can do is we can factor all of them or we can try to factor all of them and a line is usually considered to be the prime factor the prime function of a lot of these functions okay so the way we get into factoring for us the first thing we factor try to factor is a quadratic because a quadratic is a parabola and a parabola is really two lines multiplied together right so in my part of the world they teach you lines in grade nine if you're lucky not really they don't teach you that 
if you're lucky you get a good teacher they teach you that in grade 9 but usually in grade 10 they encounter this in my part of the world in other parts of the world you probably do this in grade 5 right some parts of the world you don't even get a chance to do this right straight line is called a linear function right exactly why is this called a linear function or the way you can remember is called a linear function I don't know why it is but it's called a linear function because it's a line right so consider linear functions to be your prime numbers if you were breaking down natural numbers right so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a quadratic right so let's take a look at a quadratic let's take an example of a quadratic function now if you've been here you know there's one quadratic function I like right over the real number there are polynomial factors of any degree for example uh, x squared x plus one cannot be factored and acts as a sort of a polynomial prime exactly yeah right we get into that later down the road <laughs> right it doesn't necessarily have to be a line sometimes you can't break things down any further right and those become your prime functions right it's not as it's not as simple as prime numbers prime functions right so take a look at this let's take a quadratic let's take this quadratic I'm going to use f of x if this is freaking people out think of this as y because that's all it is right so if you want we can just write it as y okay y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6 okay so we're given this function over the complex numbers you can always break it down to linear factors though which is fine can you mask of raven i haven't they don't teach that anymore complex numbers <laughs> in high school years so i've totally lost track of my complex number mathematics right so let's assume you're given this polynomial function right the polynomial and just a smooth function quadratics is one of the core base polynomial functions right so let's assume you're given this quadratic function and it's a quadratic because this thing graphs a parabola we talked about we can talk about it further right try to graph it and stuff and we've done a lot of this quadratic graphing quadratic functions if you look up chicho completing the square you'll see us graphing these guys but right now let's assume we were given this function and this function explains some system in our world right and we wanted to break it down we want to find out if there are any prime functions within this function right what's this thing made from right and this is called a simple trinomial right so what you do with simple trinomials because there's no there's only a one in front of the x squared you look for two numbers that multiply to give you six and add to give you five yeah in the complex numbers every polynomial is fully factor factorable factorizable into linear factors awesome i gotta look further into this man right so we're tr if we're trying to factor this quadratic simple quadratic function simple trinomial we look for two numbers that multiply to give you six multiply to give you six and add to give you five add to give you five okay and always remember the sign in front of the number goes with the number right so this is positive six and this is positive five okay always start off with the multiplication part because there's less integers there's a finite number of integers that can multiply to give you this number then add to give you this number okay or yeah integers so there's a finite number of numbers integers that can multiply to give you that but there's an infinite number of integers that can multiply to give you the middle number or add to give you the middle number so don't start off with the middle number start off with this number list all the numbers that multiply to give you six we got one times six negative one times negative six two times three 
negative 2 times negative 3, right? 1 times 6, 6. Negative 1 times negative 6, 6. 2 times 3, 6. Negative 2 times negative 3, 6, right? So what you do now is, hopefully this is coming out okay for you guys. Now what you do is add these two numbers. 1 plus 6 is 7, so that doesn't work. Negative 1 plus negative 6 is negative 7, so that doesn't work. 2 plus 3 is 5, that works. Let's check to make sure the next number is not going to work, right? Or what it's going to equal. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. We're looking for positive 5, so that's not going to work. So the two numbers that multiply to give you 6 add to give you 5 or 2 and 3, right? Yeah. Anuj, two and three, or three and two. So all you do for this is you go, oh, this guy, you can break down into x, x, plus two, plus three, right? So this broken down into its prime factors is this guy times this guy. That's cool, right? These are lines, linear functions, each one of these, right? So if we call y1 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6, let's give this guy a name. Let's call this w. Let's give this guy a name. Let's call this z. So y is really w times z. Now you don't have to go there. I'm just doing this for visualization. And what's w? w is x plus 2 z is x plus 3 right we're just using substitution basically god i miss being taught something fascinating <laughs> nice right so y this is what we found out so far y can break down into w times z you can think of these as different elements right i miss mathematics <laughs> I'm so glad math is part of my life, really. As as someone who has been, his life has been revolved around mathematics for the last couple of decades at least, right? Oh man, I couldn't imagine my life without mathematics. It's it it, it it's good for the processing system, really. It is amazing BS detector. It's fantastic to meditate to. It's fun to play with. It improves your abilities to do whatever you want to do in life. It gives you better understanding of the world. <laughs> like it's win, 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 right? Dang, Po, how are you doing? I know, yeah, it's amazing, right? So consider why we took why, and for us right now, why was this function? But it could be H two O. It could be water. It could be a number. It could be another compound we're breaking down. We broke Y down into a W and a Z. Wow, Y is made up of W and Z. W, what's W? W is X plus two, and Z is X plus three, right? I'm gonna do a little cleaning house, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph this. Okay, howdy chat. Amigos, <laughs> right so let's break this down i'm going to erase these guys we're, we're going to need more space right so let's break this down or erase this and write down the core stuff that we know we found out about this we found out that this thing is x plus 2 and x plus 3 right is that big enough for you oh yeah it's big enough for you guys to see right and what did we say we said x plus 2 we called w is equal to x plus 2 and we said let z equal x plus 3 that's a linear function that's a linear function a line and a line right so let's graph both of these lines Now I'm going to assume you know how to graph a line. 
Voyager 2. How are you doing? This is the x-axis. That's the y-axis, right? Now, you know what? Let's graph it using a table of values for this one, and then we're going to straight up graph it there if you know y equals mx plus b, right? Let's use a table of values for this. Now, this guy, this axis, right now we're going to graph w, and then we're going to graph z, and then we're going to graph y, okay? So if we're using a table of values to graph this, x and w, okay? Just plug in numbers for x and find out what w is. So the first number, usually easy number to deal with, you can plug in 0 for x. If you plug in 0 for x, this becomes 0 plus 2, which is 2. If you plug in 1 for x, uh, for x you're going to find out this is 3. Let's grab one. We've got one here. We've got one here. Let's grab one on this side. Negative 1. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. And if you have negative 2, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, right? Let's plot these points on the graph, right? 0 and 2. 1, 2. 1 and 3. 1, 1, 2, 3. 1 and 3. Negative 1 and 1. Negative 1 and 1. And negative 2 and 0. Negative 2 and 0, right? So this line, W, looks like this. This is the line W. Okay. Let's graph this guy. Okay. I'm going to erase our table of values here. Okay. If we're going to graph here, let's circle this so we know what we're graphing. That's W. Here's Z, right? So let's graph Z. If we're graphing this, we can use the function form notation. Y is equal to MX plus B, where B is your y-intercept, M is your slope. So if you know how to read this, and it's a sentence, by the way. Mathematics, all of the stuff that we write down, they're sentences. They're saying something. They're telling us something. So z is equal to x plus 3. That's the y-intercept, and the slope is 1 over 1. So here's the y-intercept, and you go up 1 over 1, which is the same slope as this guy, so you can make a line that's... Oops, let me make a... Oh, my God. Here is z. Okay, the line z. So we have two lines. Right? This guy's W, and that guy's Z. Okay, cool. Now, this is what this factor tells us, right? If you notice this, we have this guy times this guy, which is W times Z, right? Which means if we take W, this line, and multiply it by this line, we get that guy and the graph of that guy let's graph it should i use a different color let's use a different color <laughs> this is cool let's use this color so we're going to graph this okay the graph of this guy and this is negative three here for that guy is going to go through here here let's graph it using a better color let's graph it using brown how did you get the slope? The slope here, here, let me do a little aside, fill in the blanks. So equation of a line is y is equal to mx plus b. b is your y-intercept, and m is your slope, right? And slope is rise over run, right? Rise over run, okay? For this function, we had z is equal to x plus 3. If there's no number in front of a variable, it's just 1, right? So this is 1, and we could always make a fraction out of any number by putting it over 1. So 1 over 1. So the y-intercept for this is y-int is equal to 3, which is here, and the slope slope which is m is 1 over 1 so we went up 1 over 1 okay 
Does that make sense? I hope so. Let's graph this using brown. Okay. Logical. I love it. Nice. Cool. Yes, good description. Okay. Now take a look at this. We're going to graph this guy. Now, should we kick it up one more? Let's kick it up one more level complexity so you see really what's going on, right? I'm going to erase these guys. Well, let me paraphrase. We're not going to kick it up one level complexity. We're going to give it a little bit more explanation as to why certain things are the way they are, right? Now, I have a video out there. Let me get you this video, okay? And it's called uh, The Power of Zero. Chicho. Power, whoops. Power of Zero. Uh, we've done a couple of these, but uh, here, I'll give you this one. Take a look at this video. Okay. If for reference, anyway. Now, in this video, I'm about to let you know what it is that we're doing, okay, in this video, what the meat of that video is, and we're going to, it's going to take us like a minute to explain it, right? Now, zero in mathematics gives us problems. We can't divide by zero. If we divide by zero, the universe explodes, right? But zero also provides us solutions, okay? Here is a question for you. Let's say we have A times B times C times D equaling zero. How can you multiply four things to equal zero? What can you deduce? What can you conclude about A, B, C and or D, right? At least one needs to be zero, right? At least one of them needs to be zero very important or all could be zero yeah all could be zero as well for sure right but at least one of them has to be zero that's not the case if this was two right or any other number than zero if this was two you couldn't say at least one of them has to be two that's not correct the combination of A, B, C, and D multiplying together to give you two is infinite, right? The possibilities are infinite, okay? However, as soon as we set this equal to zero, then at least one of them has to be zero. Wow, we just took it infinite, something that was infinite, and reduced it down to at least one of them has to be zero. <laughs> Powerful 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 right incredible cool well how does this apply here well take a look at this right now we have y is equal to x plus 2 times x plus 3 right huh now let me ask you this this is a function that plots on an x y axis right on an x y grid right so ask yourself this when does this function cross the x axis when is this function going to cross the x axis just the same way you could ask this when does this function cross the uh, x-axis and when does this function cross the x axis right well this function w crosses the x-axis when w is zero because w is this this line is both r or it's y w and z when x, not when x is negative but when x is zero uh when yeah when x is negative for these ones my apologies right <laughs> But not just any negative, it has to be a certain negative, negative two. So if you want to find out when this crosses the x-axis, you just set w equal to zero because this is w equals one, two, 
3, negative 1, negative 2. So this has to be 0, right? That's our scale. So all you do is just set w equal to 0. This becomes x plus 2. Bring the 2 over. So x equals negative 2. That's what it is. That's where we are, negative 2. Let me use the right colors for this. So this is negative 2. And this guy here, if you do it for this one, set z equal to 0. Bring 3 over. That's negative 3. Right? Cool. What's my math background? Um, I got my degree in geophysics and a minor in mathematics. And I've been teaching math for like 20 years plus high school mathematics only. Right? It's not very high. I just know how to teach high school math. Now, what about this function? Well, we haven't graphed this function yet, right? But we can ask ourselves, okay, just curious. No worries, Bacon. Bacon slaying. Welcome to our live stream, by the way. So we have this function, y is equal to x plus two times x plus three. So we haven't graphed this function yet, but let's ask ourselves, when does this function cross the x-axis? Well, this function crosses the x-axis when y is equal to zero. So let's set y is equal to zero. Let's take this guy, x is equal to, or sorry, y is equal to x plus two times x plus three. So we're gonna set y is equal to zero, right? When y is zero, we're on the x-axis. So we're asking ourselves, when does this function cross the x-axis? Well, we take this, and link it up with here. Right? We have two things multiplied together to give us zero. How is that possible? The only way that's possible is if one of them is equal to zero. Okay, so you set each one equal to zero. So you can say, oh, this is true only. This function crosses the x-axis only when either this x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 3 is equal to 0. That means x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to negative 3. Oh, wow, cool. It's at the same place. Oh, nice. So this function, this function crosses the graph here and here. We don't know how it looks aside from that. But we know that it crosses the x-axis here and here. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. Right? Now, we can graph this using complete square, but I don't want to do that. Right? I want to show you another way you can look at this whole thing. This will blow you away a little bit too. Right? Or it should solidify your understanding of this concept. Take a look at this. Let's create a table. Right? And by the way, this graph, let me give you a function. Do you have uh, permutations and combinations in high school? We do. Uh, I'm not very good at it with permutations and combinations uh, because they play word games with people, right? Uh, factoring. Let me see if I can find it with one. There it is. Here's, here's a video. It's called Factoring Polynomials, a Graphical Representation, Why We Factor. And I put this video out. This is part of the Language of Mathematics series. And I put this video out in 2010, almost 10 years ago. Cool, right? Nine and a half years ago. And this is the function that we talked about. It's an eight minute video that'll graphs it for you as well, right? But I'm going to show you a table format of how you can take a look at this. Appreciate what's going on here, right? Now take a look at this. <laughs> You're like, wow, 2010. And that was me at a skate park with my tripod and people skateboarding around me and me doing mathematics on the walls, right? You were ahead of time. I just did what I did, right? Now take a look at this. Let's create a table. X x y actually x w z and y right x w z and y okay 
This is W, that's Z, that's Y, and our X appears in all of them, right? It's the independent variable that both, or all three of them, W, Z, and Y are dependent on, right? So X is our independent variable, and W, Z, and Y are dependent on X, right? So let's find out what W, Z, and Y are for certain values of X. Cool? Cool. Let's plug in x is equal to zero. What's w when x is equal to zero? You put zero in for x, so w is equal to two. Z, if you put in zero for x, z is equal to, because this disappears, z is equal to three. If you put in zero for x here, this becomes two, that becomes three, two times three is six. Right? Do you see what's going on? Let's do another number. Let's plug in x is equal to 2. Okay. Should we do 2? Yeah, let's do 2. Ah, let's do 1 first so we don't go too far. Oh my god, it makes so much sense. What sense? Oh, wow, nice. <laughs> so take a look at this. Let's put in x is equal to 1. 1. Plug in 1 here. 1 plus 2 is 3. So w becomes 3. Put in one here, one plus three is four, right? What's y? Put in one here, one plus two is three, one plus three is four, three times four is 12. Wait a second, wait a second. Exactly, Anuj. Why? It's just these two multiplied together. What? What? Right? Let's put it in x is equal to negative, negative. Let's make it num easy for us to multiply. <laughs> I don't know what that says. Let's put in negative 8. Negative 8. When x is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 2 is negative 6. Negative 8 plus 3, oh, ne bro, negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Negative 6, well, if you put in, you could put in negative 8 here if you want, but we don't have to anymore. We could just multiply these two. Negative 6 times negative 5 is 30. That's what y is. Wow, cool. 30. <laughs> I think negative six times negative five, thirty, right? My voice says I'm gonna. So check this out. When x is zero, w is two, z is three, y is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. When z is one, oh sorry, when x is one, are you steady? We're doing. We're just doing math, learning math, practicing math, meditating, right? When x is 1, w is 3. When x is 1, w is 3. Well, it was. We knew that. z is 4. Well, we knew that. y is 12. Oh, man. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> I've been out of contact with any school subjects for nine years now. <laughs> no, you're not, man. You're not. It'll take you two seconds to get this back. The cool thing is, I don't know what that. Hi, Chicho. Hello, QC Warrior. How are you doing? How is life? Right? Negative eight. Negative eight. We're not even on the board. Negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, negative eight. When x is negative eight, W is negative 6, right down here. Z is negative 5, like down here if you extend this. And Y is 30. Right? What does the graph of this look like? This parabola look like? This stream is about mathematics. It's easy to review math unlike some other subjects. Yeah. Math should be the easiest course you take in high school. Period. University, different game. High school should be the easiest course you take because it just builds.
from previous years, right? 30 is definitely out of the whiteboard. I think so up there, <laughs> right? If we end up graphing this function, this is what it's going to look like. Take a look. That's what it looks like. Let me make this darker so it comes out. My pens are running out. I need to go to the stationery store. We need to go get ourselves more stationery. <laughs> Having a little break from steadying, pun intended. And I saw you were live, so thought I would take my little break here. Awesome, QC Warrior. I'm glad. <laughs> it's a nice place to show. Two, two, et tu vois. Two, et tu vois. All right? So that's the function. Now, here's the kicker. To me, this is the kicker, right? People don't realize, but this graph stuff is really important in engineering stuff. Huge, humongous. It's crazy important in economics as well. Crazy important everywhere, right? Crazy important everywhere. Right? And here's the kicker. We took two lines, right? Let me set two lines, multiply them together, and we've got a curve. Why is that? We got a curve because of the property of mathematics where if you multiply two negatives you get a positive right even in economics right so if you multiply two negatives you get a positive now take a look at this now i talk about this in the the short video the th the eight minute video that i linked up previously right when we're breaking the sucker down okay but think of it this way the zero point, the factoring, when you're factoring, you're finding where functions cross the x-axis. That's what it is. Long story, right? Why do we factor? We're factoring to find where functions crosses the x crosses cross the x-axis, right? In the most simplistic form. Sometimes you're factoring to find out when functions cross each other, right? And these linear lines have endless possibilities, right? And they go on forever. Yeah. Unless we give it boundaries, limits, right? That make sense according to our systems. Okay. But take a look at this. Let's assume... Oh, this is going to be red. This might not come out well. I'm going to try green. Let's try green. So the x-axis is sort of a important point, right? So take a look at this point. Let's extend this up and let's extend this up. This is basically the line X is equal to negative two and this is well, X is equal to negative three. If you look at this functions, all three functions, W on this side of negative two, X is equal to negative two is positive because it's above the X axis. What Z is positive because it's above the X axis right so positive times a positive gives us a positive so we're above the x-axis right if you look at this zone from negative 2 to negative 3 w is below the x-axis so it's negative z is above the x-axis in this zone z above is above the x-axis so it's positive negative times a positive is negative that's why negative times a positive is negative that's why our function y is below the x-axis right and then as you get closer to negative three this number gets smaller so it's kicking up this y value and then once you go to this side of negative three when x is negative three both the z and w are below the x-axis so they're both negative and negative times a negative is positive positive so when you're multiplying two linear functions when they go below the x-axis there are two negatives multiplying each other to become a positive if you're talking about quadratic so our function y has to start coming back up again it has no choice that's its behavior right cool most scientific studies require at least knowledge of calculus which you could definitely need uh, 
good graphic knowledge for yeah the whole one of the main purposes of high school is to allow people to get a visual of the functions be able to graph functions and understand their behavior huge and calculus just takes it a step further and finds more crucial points of functions discontinuities and limits and and all that jazz right break it over over time to study i'll catch the rest of the this on youtube when it comes out awesome qc warrior <laughs> thanks for popping by so much information from a single equation so much there's so much there right there's so much there but once you understand this all of a sudden oh wow like wow so powerful so powerful right beautiful absolutely beautiful okay fun i love it i love it and we've graphed these functions before let me find you a video for completing the square that way you'll know completing the square we've done this multiple times we've done it on live streams as well um, but here let me give you this link this is an ASMR um, video just nice and chill going through the whole process right. I'm gonna have a apple that was an hour of full-on talking <laughs> so good really so good All right I'm not sure if Hannah's still here he asked about the factor but we're a little delayed in replying By the way, gang, tomorrow at 9 a.m., 9 to 11 a.m., we're doing a live stream on Julian Assange and catching up on what has taken place and where we are regarding that situation. Um, I was, I came to Canada halfway through grade five. So I was really young when I came here and I didn't speak a word of English. Oops. So, and it blew me away, really. I remember I didn't speak a word of English, so I was struggling with everything, right? Except mathematics. I remember sitting in math class and I didn't know what was going on. Like, this is a memory etched in my brain. Yeah, void. Nice. <laughs> so this is etched in my brain. Like, really, it blew me away at the time. Like a young Chicho talking going on around them doesn't understand a word right and it's time to do mathematics and this was the first time first class I had a math right stayed with me for 40 plus years right and I'm sitting there and in Iran <laughs> the math is at a higher level right Math is like universal language, 100%, right? It's Raiden. Salam Aleikum. Salam Aleikum. Yeah, hey, Raiden, how are you doing? <laughs> so I'm sitting there and they start doing math. Two plus five. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there going, what? And I started looking around. People are writing this down and writing the answer. Some, some didn't know, or there was some multiplication. There was a whole bunch of great. <laughs> it's it's weird. Like I mean, by the way, memory, memory, um, in in the court of law, 
just remembering something is not end all and be all of the truth being told right because memory plays a trick tricks on us right so it could have been 12 plus 15 right whatever it was it was addition and then we're going writing these down and some people were putting up their hands asking questions because they didn't know how to do it and i was like what i thought it was in a twilight zone or something it was just weird to me because we'd done that in grade two maybe one i don't know two the grade five halfway through grade five the grade five that i knew in iran back in the late 1970s carried me all the way up to factoring in grade 10 mathematics that they were teaching in canada right grade five grade 10 that's the level of mathematics the discrepancy there the inequality there crazy crazy am i i'm not a lawyer i have no desire to enter a bureaucratic system on that level i'm not even willing to enter a bureaucratic system on a teacher's level right i i just teach mathematics uh, privately and in groups and i work with certain private institutions to help their kids learn math right so yeah yeah i mean addition in grade five what An anuj you'd be amazed uh how bad the current education system in canada is we had uh lowest common multiple and highest uh, common factor in grade three yeah anuj where are you from so you're in you're an anarchist I'm a Putin roaster. I'm a, I don't want to categorize myself as certain political leaning. I am definitely against decentralization. India. Oh yeah, yeah. Anuj, I rarely have students of who've been educated in mathematics from India uh, that I work with that need help. And the ones I I do get, they're in usually grade twelve, and they're they're trying to understand the systems really well, and I can help them with that 100 percent, right i do this i don't just teach factoring i don't teach i don't teach i connect right so when kids need help i connect right calculus was always the hardest for me now for me as well i learned i failed my first year calculus i when i retook it i found a really good book and i learned calculus from the book right please help i'm 25 <laughs> 25 and in seven years you're the oh connected me with math i'm 25 and in seven, so in seven years you're 25 you can learn a lot of mathematics in seven years a lot of mathematics in seven years apple I was an average student and scored 94 out of 100 in 10th grade. Fruit, yummy favor. Mm -hmm. Fruit, fantastic. So average student in India, 90, 94 out of 100? Was that correct, Anuj? Try hard. Try your best. Try let me rephrase that yeah try your best i guess yeah 94 mathematics nice i would never say give 100 i'm 25 in seventh grade <laughs> jamik if your mathematics is on seventh grade level my recommendation is go to my website and or go to youtube and look for chicho language of mathematics start off with the first video we put out most others scored 100. i always had a hard time until fourth year of high school 
with math until I realized it was my attitude over the classes that held me back. Once you give yourself into it, it's so pleasant. Yeah, Void, agreed with that. So in geometry, you're part of part of math, or does it fall more on the scientific scale? It's math for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of mathematics, branches of mathematics have come from geometry. There's actually a book out there that I don't have. I've read little bits of it that uh, or fairly large article on it that had excerpts in it and stuff uh, that teaches calculus with geometry. Uh, once I have the time, I'll track it down and learn it. Khan Academy is good for learning basics. Yeah, Khan Academy is good for learning basics if you know what it is you're looking for. I would paraphrase it that way personally. But here, let me give you our playlist. Uh, for sure Khan Academy is good but you have to I haven't gone to their website on uh, oops I don't want that I haven't gone to their website on uh, just dug down into uh, uh, how they begin right you can just do searches on specific things that you like uh, that you're looking for hey I don't want this Sorry if I'm messing around with this. YouTube changes their things YouTube does. Here's the playlist for language of mathematics. Go to the first video. And the first video is way, way, way down. There's, I don't know how many videos in this. How many videos in this? Uh, there's 161 videos. Go to video number one is sorted in reverse order so the newest one are up top so you want to go all the way down that's where i do introduction to language of mathematics and what it is we're going to talk talk about okay i absolutely find that a lot of people just psych themselves out when it comes to math yeah mask of raven 100 percent kids they go into panic mode it's crazy it's very weird cup flick trainees Hey, I have a serious question a doubt about the math physics of the Big Bang. Can you help? Uh, you and everybody else, a lot of people have questions and problems with the Big Bang. Algebraic geometry is a huge part of math. Yeah. Thanks for the help on my past. I hope so. Let us know if you need help. We do these drop in math sessions on a regular basis. Chicho competition is so cutthroat in Asia that even if you score well it's not good enough yeah and I don't like that system personally it's it's not inclusive it's it's bad for society is the smallest point sphere or anything possible also the simplest thing possible uh, the Big Bang it didn't start off from a from a sphere it started off from a, according to theory, start off from a point source, but that point source didn't have dimensions. It was just energy. It just there is no dimensions pre Big Bang. Dimension dimensional space came to be at the moment of conception, at the moment of the Big Bang. Right? Hey Chicho, are you planning on doing some college level math in, in the future? Yeah. Uh, Arno Govan, I can't pronounce that name. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, in the future, yeah, I don't know when. Some of the stuff is college level, depending on what program you're in. But calculus, I'm assuming you're specifically talking about. I do plan on it. I just need to reach a certain level where I can spend a little bit more time on it. Uh, I need to be self sustaining with this project, right? It takes time. May I ask a question about space? Sure, of course, Void. When are you gonna prove the random thoughts? <laughs> Maybe uh, give me about 30 years if I'm around. Maybe by that time I have enough, uh, my math abilities will be powerful enough to tackle some of these things, right? We'll be doing live streams on a Riemann hypothesis with me shrunken down, right? Yeah, it's not inclusive, you are right. Yeah. 
if all the energy of the universe that made matter and all was in that point wouldn't the force holding it together tap out at some point making the first thing that existed a sort of a nuclear sphere or beam beam structure nuclear sphere or beam structure uh, mask of raven um, any thoughts on this or anyone else any thoughts on this holding it together tap out at some point what do you mean tap out at some point making the first thing that existed a sort of a nuclear sphere well theoretically we are a sphere universe sphere expanding right chicho i need some help with trigonometric functions cosecant secant and caught okay intelligent blueberry what do you need when gravity tap and hey you honestly pussy out of the metaphysical smallest point possible simplest thing possible time i i don't know uh, if the space is expanding every second hour time what exactly is it expanding into exactly what is it expanding into is it creating space as it gets going are we just a cancer and some other larger something that's growing and at some point they're going to figure out to get rid of us is that what it is uh, like let's say uh, you could go to the wall where where it's expanding and manage to go past that wall what is beyond that wall what is it expanding into void great question star trek has done a couple of episodes on that where they go to the edge of the universe and they see just the horizon and it's lots of colors and we don't know no one knows no one knows tap out equals be overcome okay be overcome at some point making the first thing that exists is sort of a nuclear sphere or beam structure uh, I don't know what a beam structure is, but nuclear, but again, it's a sphere expanding as far as we know, right? In Japan, students are taught on um, abacus at really young age. Good. That's good. Um, trigonometric functions, intelligent blueberry. By the way, uh, intelligent blueberry, have you seen our trig playlist? Here, let me give you the trigonometry playlist because I'm just going to touch on it right now. Um, where is our trigonometry playlist? Hey. Lots. Oh, here it is. Jeez, Luis. Here's our trick playlist. Blueberry. Boop. Here's our trick playlist. Uh, I don't have any thoughts on this because I haven't studied physics deeply enough but I think most people fundamentally misunderstand the current theory pertaining to our early universe and it would take extensive education to overcome those issues yeah I agree with you space is like the ocean to me freaky how little we've discovered it yeah well the real problem is I'm having is how to type them on a non graph calculator oh it's just there uh, but the thing is how can I know when to apply them in an angle or distance um, when to apply them in an angle or distance I'm not sure an angle or distance but if you want to uh, the first part uh, uh, the real problem is I'm having a how to type them on a non graphing non graphing calculator all they are is just a oh, can't read that here let me erase this so if we have our sine function check this out if we have our sine function uh, here sine theta cos theta and tan theta right is that dark enough I think so hopefully it's dark enough then cosecant theta is just 1 over 
sine theta. Secant theta is 1 over cos theta. And cot theta is 1 over tan theta. So all you got to do to punch them into your calculator is just 1 divided by sine, 1 divided by cos, 1 divided by tan. Right? That's all they are. Right? How could the smallest point have any property at all if the thing giving such property is a property of a piece of the, sp the space of the thing? You can just keep shaving it down. There is no space at the origin of the Big Bang. There's a possibility that Julian Assange will be extradited to us. Yeah. Or suicided in jail. What's your view on first? Oh, you just you just want to talk. That's good. Trinus. A trinus. By the way, if you haven't thought through, like for example, the question you were asking about the Big Bang, if the answer was given to you, all of a sudden you go, oh, there is no such thing as space at the pre-Big Bang. That should be a huge revelation to you. You should not be on a live stream and asking more questions that are totally unrelated you should probably go for a walk and think about what you just discovered right <laughs> unless you're trolling which you are <laughs> no brother pre big bang there was no such thing as space space was created at the beginning of the Big Bang. That's a revelation to you. That should be profound to you. You should not say, no, that's not true. You should say, hey, maybe Chicho is full of BS. I'll go look it up. Or if he's right, oh, your mind just got blown, right? Right? How's, how's it going, Chicho? Mick, how you doing? Hope all is well. Doing good, brother. Thank you very much. Does that one apply always or whenever i'm given a sum but that 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 okay hold on a second oh wait a second well i walked in on a funny point you walked in on a funny point <laughs> i'm just gonna copy this <laughs> so blueberry what's your question does that one apply always or whenever I'm given a sum it applies always it's the definition of it right so for example if you have oh, what's an example we could use hello hello to Ching Jason how are you doing how's everybody doing okay so we know the gold keys why is it oh okay you're out <laughs> death to non-believers <laughs> I've never heard anyone called someone suddenly super funny super funny so blueberry yes this is the definition that's what it is right that's the definition so whenever you're given a sign of something any type of function and by the way this is what the graphs look like and check this out I'm, I'm so disappointed for me this year because I don't have any I have a grade 12 student this year that we already did the math for him he did it speedy Gonzalez style during the summer and I for some reason this year I don't have any grade 12 students yet which I'm super disappointed because I'm not getting to practice this stuff so if I make any silly mistakes, brain farts, please correct me, right? Doing well, working, and it's super rainy out, but been a good day so far, awesome. I'm enjoying this rainy weather, actually. Actually, I gotta go for a long walk after this. So I'm gonna be walking in the rain and the cold, dress warm, right? So this is what the functions look like. Sine function looks like this. Goes from one to negative one, right? And here's two pi, right? Here's pi, here's this, here's this. So func sine function does this, right? And this is, oops, sine 
of theta versus theta. Those are the graphs, right? So cosecant is just whatever the y value is, sine theta flipped, right? So first thing you do whenever you're graphing a function, you find the unknowns, the boundaries, the limits, the asymptotes, the holes and stuff like that, the no go to points, right? So all you do, you go, oh, okay, at pi, we have an asymptote. At two pi, we have an asymptote. At zero, we have an asymptote, because if you flip zero, you get undefined. So if I'm asked what the cosecant of an angle of 30 degrees, here, let me show it to you this way as well. Um, yeah, so you take the, so basically you take the sine of 30 degrees and flip it, right? So sine of 30, here. Thirty, sixty, ninety. That's one square root of three and two. That's the ratio that exists. So sine of thirty. Oops, sine of thirty is one over two. So cosecant of thirty is one divided by one over two, which is just two, right? The other way you can think about it is this sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse opposite over hypotenuse cosecant of an angle is flip this hypotenuse over opposite over here opposite of 30 is 1 over 2 and over here is 2 over 1 right and as far as graphs of these things go they look like this. Okay. Are we doing a little trigonometry? Little trigonometry. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm asked what that, yeah. Yeah. I hope that cleared things up a little bit. It is really interesting for sure, Anuj. Love trigonometry. Love. I'm so disappointed that I don't have anyone to teach trigonometry to right now. I love delving into this stuff. Oh, so disappointed. <laughs> Just find sine of 30 degrees and flip numerator and denominator. Yeah. Asymptote. Laugh aloud. I remember the term, but don't recall what it means. Uh, been way too long. Uh, Twitching Jason, asymptote just basically means no go zone. You can't go there. It's impossible. Okay. Like, ah, the sound of rain hitting off the umbrella as the rich, uh, rich smell from feeding plants and nature encompasses you. Doesn't get better. Doesn't get better. Doesn't get better. Really, it's beautiful. It could get better sometimes. Put on a little bit of Thonemius Monk and pa pa pa. Off you go, right? Off you go. I hope that helped out, uh, Blueberry. I hope that helped out. What do we got? Cool. I was talking a mile a minute in this stream. I wanted to make sure we got the factoring done uh, properly. You can get as close as you want to an asymptote, but never hit it. Yeah. Just get close, 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 infinitely close, but you can never touch it. Right? It's like this. Oh, getting close, getting close. But never touch it. I remember a lot of this from physics courses I took. Uh, I've always preferred practical applications for math, like physics or st statistics. Uh, super fun working through practical real-life problems yeah dangerous then though cutting shapes dancing along the street street my G is so much I G in front of passing bus <laughs> yeah you gotta be careful you gotta be careful in my part in this part man it's so chill here like if you're if 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 you're on the sidewalk and even if you think about trying to cross the road like 
if you just pause, cars will stop. <laughs> it's like, no, no, please go. I'm just stopping. So you talk about current events every now and then. Yeah, for sure, Anuj. Yeah. We have to. We have to. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. Yeah, it's pretty here sweet too. Roads, buildings directly in front of my house and deep wooden area out back. It's a nice spot, nice. Awesome. We're lucky. I'm in the Midwest USA and can confirm it's like that here as well. Sometimes people will even uh, cause small traffic jams at intersections because of people trying to let other people go before them. Yeah, it's crazy. I don't get it. Like I've seen people slam on brakes for a pedestrian and obviously they hadn't checked their rear rear mirror where all of a sudden people are like, so dangerous so dangerous luckily they're driving really slow in general here so they're fender benders which is a great thing which is a good thing <coughs> so tomorrow morning from 9 a.m until 11 a.m we're doing a stream on Julian Assange, right? And it's part five, I think. Fifth one we've done. It's more than fifth one, but it's the fifth one in the series that we've been doing. Okay, if you're interested, pop by. Uh, you wanna know what's going on that front. Uh, it won't be current events, but it, it will contain uh, some of the things that are going on. Okay. What do you guys say? Should we call the stream? Uh, time Boop. hour and 42 minutes take a different route home after work now too risky passing by a local school oh yeah especially if they're like in and out had one time a child just run out oh in, into the road seatbelt almost sliced me in half breaking oh wow good thing you broke though it'd be horrendous i've never had i've never hit in a car i've never been hit thank you Poof. and i've never hit uh, i actually have never caused an accident as far as i know anyway i have been in accidents but always it's been other people's fault and even even that when it's someone else's fault you bear a little bit of responsibility as well scared to s out of me scared to s out of me rather not run the risk at all yeah yeah agreed mick uh, mick uh, i try to avoid where, where children are what is the difference between pre-calculus and calculus i never understood it's just a transition right there is no difference it's it's just mathematics they just make the separation because calculus is really introduction of time into the equations into the functions and you trying to house try to analyze how the function behaves over a certain period of time over a certain period of length right before that they don't really incorporate it all together but it's all the same beast right like if you don't know the pre-calc stuff you can't do the calc stuff right so it's just oh you need pre-calc to do calc and pre-calc they just take a whole bunch of mathematics and put it into a category and say that's pre-calc okay Anuj, thank you for being here. Thank you for the conversation. Okay. We'll see you on the next stream or next math stream. Okay, thank you for popping in. I'm glad you like the mathematics, by the way. Pre-calculus give you knowledge of graphing functions trick that you need to do calculus well. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think well is the important part here. You have to have a really good understanding of functions before you can use them. And that's really what calculus is, right? When is your Assange stream? Sorry, Assange stream tomorrow morning starting at 9 a.m. Okay, let me do a double check on that. Starting at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time, my time, west coast of Canada. Okay, 
so I'm just bringing up the post for some reason twitch took out their events category so you can't make events anymore you just which is weird I don't know why these platforms just keep on doing wacko things uh, it's part six actually we're doing tomorrow uh, December 11th from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. PST okay sorry I missed uh, most of the stream but glad I was able to uh, no worries thank you for popping by twitching Jason always tilted I know this off topic but do you have any plans of making a strawberry liqueur in the future as soon as we start getting uh, yeah you know what the, the strawberry liqueur <laughs> was dangerous for me I went through that thing way too fast so I'm taking a break from the strawberry liqueur making it um, the Cornelian cherry liqueur is just as delicious the pineapple cherry liqueur is delicious but strawberry liqueur will make uh, maybe when I get fresh strawberries in the spring maybe I'll go buy frozen organic strawberries and make them then the event function wasn't used much. yeah see here's the kicker Dante uh, for me uh, YouTube took out their uh, what do you call it annotations because they said very few people were using them but I was using them up the yin yang right I lost hour countless hours of work when YouTube took those out because that's so many annotations right so I I don't really put any more effort into YouTube than I have to now YouTube or Google because they discontinued a few different things that I used to use a lot Twitch just dis dis discontinued events but I was using events a lot so just because people aren't using majority of people aren't using it it doesn't mean it's, it's useless but I guess they're trying to it's Wall Street right they're trying to optimize profits I don't get it a uh, Julian Assange stream. <laughs> Julian Assange. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, too addicting. Too addicting. A stream about Julian Assange. Did you ever make regular raspberry liqueur? Raspberry? Have I made raspberry? I must have made raspberry once, but I've never. I don't remember it. I don't. Maybe I haven't made raspberry liqueur. A good idea, lonely piggy. Raspberry liqueur. We need to make raspberry liqueur. It'll be tart. I think excellent I have an entire booklet I've kept to add details now and then over the years back from mid to late 2013 14 dropped off after a while but I wrote down so much info cool blueberry sorry Chicho my connection went out so I missed the entire oh no blueberry what it's gonna be I'll have to stream up on bit shooter YouTube in the next few days okay the bottom line is money raspberry liqueur stream coming raspberry liqueur stream coming i'll work on it okay okay gang thank you for being here okay i never made my coconut liqueur but i did buy one of a few months ago that was incredible nice nice uh so if you can make it i'll see you guys tomorrow and most likely we're gonna do some kind of stream this weekend maybe a current event stream uh, just to get people caught up okay uh, take care chicho you too mick you too mick have a great day you guys as well you guys as well dante thank you for taking care of business top fiver was here for a while thank you for taking care of business and everybody else thank you for the conversations and thank you for everything okay thank you for the follows thank you for the subs uh, if i didn't catch any any of them okay uh, aside from that i'll see you tomorrow if you can make it otherwise uh, the next few streams bye for now